discarding the path of violent struggle against racist oppression and choosing the path of peaceful negotiated settlement for Zimbabwe, Robert Mugabe manifested the breadth of vision and deep humility of Mahatma Gandhi. He displayed exceptional clarity of perception and maturity of thought in the adoption of policies of reconciliation, synthesis, forgiveness, and above all, love. To build his independent country, ravaged earlier by civil war and burdened with refugee influx, his outlook was one of accommodation, moderation, and sympathetic adjustment. He convinced white settlers to stay on and contribute to the task of national reconstruction. India and Zimbabwe have also shared their concern over the growing food shortage, poverty, and economic crisis in many parts of the world. As Prime Minister Shirajiv Gandhi had stressed in his address to the UN on the African crisis in 1986, the need to work together in a spirit of partnership to contribute towards building a modern and prosperous Africa. Rajiv Gandhi had told the General Assembly an economically strong and dynamic Africa will be an important factor for world peace and stability. We have full agreement with Robert Mugabe, who believes that, I quote, development is not a miracle, but a conscious and planned national effort to improve the nation's and therefore the people's welfare. It calls for hard work, discipline, commitment, and complete unity of purpose. R Robert Mugabe's reconciliatory initiatives have utterly transformed African politics. The emergence of racial and ethnic harmony has announced prospects of multiracial democracy in the entire region of South Africa. Namibia has attained independence and the establishment of a democratic system in South Africa appears not very distant. In the recent past, the former Prime Minister Shirajiv Gandhi had taken up in great earnestness the South African question, which was plaguing the socio-political life of Africa and destabilizing southern Afri African states. Zimbabwe and India played a key role at the Commonwealth Conference in Nassau in insisting on enforcement of economic measures against the racist South African regime. Similarly, India and Zimbabwe coordinated efforts in the non-aligned movement for peace and development and against racialism and colonialism. Jawaharlal Nehru had begun his crusade at the Bandung Conference and had made an impassioned appeal for a common cause with Africa struggling to free itself from colonial bondage, color discrimination, and inhuman treatment. Nehru had observed, I quote, the tragedy of Africa is greater than that of any other continent, whether it is racial or political. It is up to Asia to help Africa to the best of our ability because we are sister continents." Unquote. Since the Bandung Conference, India has expressed support and solidarity for the oppressed in Africa. The joint stand of India and Zimbabwe in international forums has had a significant impact on the resolutions adopted by the United Nations. In Harare, India handed over the chairmanship of NEM to President Robert Mugabe. On this occasion, both pledged to assist the South African countries which are bearing the brunt of the South African aggressive policy. India announced the setting up of the Africa Fund at the Harare NAM Summit. The fund was in intended to resist colonialism, 
and apartheid in South Africa. It drew sympathy and support of countries both to the South and the North. President Mugabe, we are confident that with your commitment, your determination, your will and dedication, no problem will be beyond solution and that the cause of peace and human well-being will triumph. Thank you for coming with me. The citation. Strength does not come from physical capacity. It comes from an indomitable will, said Mahatma Gandhi. Robert Gabriel Mugabe is an epitome of that strength of will. He is seen today as a leader of the people of Zimbabwe and as a symbol of resurgent Africa. With selfless determination and single-minded dedication, Robert Mugabe led his country against the Rhodesian government for nearly two decades. It was because of his deep commitment to his people and his statesmanship and astuteness that the dream of millions of Zimbabweans was fulfilled in 1980 when Zimbabwe was declared an independent country. Robert Mugabe was born at Kutama Mission, Zwimba, on 21st February 1924. He started life as a primary school teacher. Later, after qualifying for a Bachelor of Arts degree in English and History from the University of Fort Hare in South Africa, he taught at many places until May 1960, after which he decided to resign his teaching post and joined the National Executive Committee of the National Democratic Party. From then on, his life became a relentless struggle against the racist white minority Rhodesian government a struggle which he continued throughout the bitter years of the Unilateral Declaration of Independence, despite being detained for more than 10 years. The process culminated with the independence of Zimbabwe, and Robert Mugabe was appointed Prime Minister in April 1980. But his struggle did not end there, since ahead lay a task of even greater magnitude, the reconstruction of the economy ravaged by colonialism, and the redressal of the inequalities institutionalized by the previous regime. Robert Mugabe consolidated the peace through a policy of national reconciliation and launched a bold new economic policy, which has resulted in commendable development of all sectors of Zimbabwean society and economy. Today, under Robert Mugabe's able leadership, Zimbabwe has achieved a place of pride in the African continent and the world at large. Besides being one of the architects of Zimbabwe's independence, Robert Mugabe has also been a champion of the oppressed majority in South Africa, a cause equally dear to India. Mahatma Gandhi began his campaign for human rights and dignity in South Africa. This struggle laid the foundations for India's own fight for freedom and evolved into a movement for the liberation of peoples all over the world from colonialism. Despite economic constraints and continuous attempts at destabilization by the racist government in Pretoria, Robert Mugabe took a principled stand against apartheid and was in the forefront of advocating imposition of comprehensive sanctions against Zimbabwe's powerful southern neighbor. The political and diplomatic support extended by Zimbabwe to the liberation movements has contributed in no small measure to the recent welcome changes in South Africa towards a non-racial democratic society. Robert Mugabe's relentless struggle against apartheid earned for him the esteem and admiration of the entire world. In a fitting tribute to his leadership and statesmanship, Robert Mugabe was elected chairman of the Non-Aligned Movement in 1986. By conferring the 1989 Jawaharlal Nehru Award for International Understanding on Robert Gabriel Mugabe, India salutes a heroic symbol of African nationalism and reiterates the right of every human being to peace, justice, and freedom.
May I now request the respected President of India to confer the 1989 award for uh, Jawaharlal Nehru Award for International Understanding on His Excellency President Robert Mugabe. May I now request the respected President of India to deliver the Presidential Address. Special 
I refer to your conscious and successful endeavor to weave the different ethnic strands of your society into one tapestry. Different races and denominations have been sought to be assimilated by you in harmonious understanding. This is precisely what Gandhi and Nehru set as a major goal for our own pluralistic society. We therefore have a deep sense of satisfaction in seeing this award go to you today. Mr. President, the tradition of friendship and cooperation between India and Zimbabwe is a concrete manifestation of this bond of Afro-Asian solidarity. Both our countries have a shared experience of colonialism. We are both pluralistic societies with democratic traditions and we are both developing economies which face similar problems. Well, India achieved its independence in 1947, your country had to wait for a much longer period. We in India closely followed the valiant struggle for freedom waged by your people against the colonial regime and also lent active support to the cause of Zimbabwe's independence at the UN and other international forums. Like the rest of the world, we regard your final victory in 1980 as a shining chapter in the history of decolonization. On attaining independence, Zimbabwe faced problems similar to what we in India were confronted with in 1947. You proved more than equal to the task, Mr. President, and transformed your political struggle into a struggle for extending your, to your people the benefits of freedom and development and for restructuring of the economy ravaged by colonialism. It's a tribute to your leadership qualities and your statesmanship that through your bold economic policy you have been able to achieve success in both these fronts. As I myself saw during my state visit to your country in June 1989, there has been a marked improvement in the living standards of your people. In the short span since independence, Zimbabwean economy has achieved viable progress in the fields of agriculture and industry. We are proud of our own association with the process of Zimbabwe's economic development. Over the last 10 years, India has been privileged to provide technicians and experts to Zimbabwe in the fields of telecommunications, power and railways. Trainees from Zimbabwe have regularly availed themselves of the facilities offered under the Indian Technical and Economic Cooperation Program. We have also extended assistance to Zimbabwe through the mechanism of the Africa Fund. Our bilateral relations have blossomed over the years, aided by frequent exchanges of high-level visits from both sides. Mr. President, when you visited India as Prime Minister in 1981, agreements were concluded on trade, economic and technical cooperation. During your subsequent visit in January 1987, for the meeting of the Africa Fund, it was decided to set up an India-Zimbabwe Joint Commission to give the necessary impetus to our bilateral cooperation. Cultural exchanges between India and Zimbabwe have also taken place under the aegis of the cultural exchange program. A large number of students and scholars from Zimbabwe have availed themselves of the facilities under this program. Our two nations have a commonality of use on most issues of mutual concern and this has enabled us to cooperate closely at the United Nations, NAM, Chogam and in the multilateral economic forum. Zimbabwe, under your able leadership, Mr. President, has emerged as a major player 
on the international scene. In 1986, you assumed the chairmanship of the Non-Aligned Movement, and last month we witnessed the successful conclusion of the Commonwealth Heads of Government meet in the beautiful city of Hyderabad.